What's going on everybody? It's your boy Greg Peters, Miata Dad, and today I'll be doing a little bit of testing on the Miata. Made me realize how much water I'm probably gonna spill. Tofu is definitely getting damaged today. But for those of you that haven't seen the last couple videos I posted, I'm dealing with a driveline vibration that the Miata has had for about a year. I have the BMW transmission swap in there and I have not been able to get it running smooth yet and myself and a few other people are having this issue so I've been working really hard to try to figure out what it is. I've gotten tons of suggestions from you guys at home that are watching which I'm greatly appreciative of but I can tell that a lot of them did not really watch all the videos. Not that I expect you to like sit through a 25 plus minute video and pay attention to all of it. I mean, that's like a short class. But my goal for today's video is to run a few tests on the Miata to really demonstrate the type and severity of the issue and automatically eliminate a lot of the things that people have been suggesting so I can move forward and um, hopefully get this thing solved and get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Luckily, the car does exhibit the problem while it's just on jack stands, which might make it a little bit easier to chase. So I've got five cameras, including the one that you are watching me through, to set up different angles and show different things to give you guys a really good explanation of what's going on here. And uh, it's also kind of a test that you could do at home on your own Miata to compare. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Oh yeah, and as part of the troubleshooting process, I did go ahead and decide to pull the Get Track 260 kit out of my car and I'm switching over to the K Miata ZF kit. Both kits are extremely similar, but the ZF transmission is 10, 12 years newer, way lower miles, it's stronger. Not that I think that's gonna solve the problem, but if I'm gonna keep diving deeper and deeper into this car, I want to convert to the ZF anyways because at the end of all this, I want the car to be perfect. So I'll be swapping that in somewhat soon when the kit arrives and take that from there. But for today, I am gonna be testing it with the Getrack 260 transmission. Not that one obviously, but the one that's inside the car. I've got it up on jack stands and have the front wheels chalked and that'll let me safely spin those rear wheels up to highway speed. I've also got my trusty container of water here which I'll use to measure the level of the vibrations. And I also want to do these tests so when I'm moving forward in the troubleshooting process I have some kind of data aside from just the butt dyno which the butt dyno is kind of the most important part because this is all about improving the driving experience of the car but at least with this I can compare the footage back to back and as I change things I can see like oh it actually did get a little bit better or maybe worse. I just like to keep track of stuff as much as possible like that. But well, I forgot to mention earlier if you have no idea what I'm talking about I'll link all of my previous videos on this topic in the description below. Uh, the first thing I want to do here is just a couple little tests. So for starters, no pun intended, let's take a look at startup and idle with some relatively stiff polyurethane motor mounts. A little bit of waviness in the water. And I mean, you can feel the car shake, just, you know, normal stiff motor mount stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and rev it here. the car in fifth gear and take take the wheel speed up to various levels which I'll post on screen so you can see how the water looks. A lot of people have suggested issues with the clutch, flywheel, motor mounts, exhaust, lots of things to do with the engine itself. 
Now this test is of course going to disprove all those because I'm going to shut the engine off with the wheel still spinning and you'll be able to see the resulting vibration in the water with that engine cam to show you that the engine has fully shut down. Now obviously the vibration goes away rather quickly because that wheel speed starts dropping immediately but if you look closely at the video you can see the engine has completely shut down and the vibration is still in full effect. Which means it is occurring somewhere between the output flange of the transmission and the wheels. And that's another thing people are suggesting is your wheels are off balance, your tires need to be balanced. So the next test, I'm going to remove the wheels completely and we'll see what happens. Now for this test, you do need to install two lug nuts and kind of snug them down. Don't need to be fully torqued. Hold the phone. You are fully torqued, bro. But snug them down so the brake rotor has no play at all because them things will rattle around and make a whole bunch of noise. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. For you guys that are not familiar with the kit, it is a very basic recipe for any transmission swap kit. It's a simple block to transmission adapter plate and then made it up to that as a BMW transmission. We've got a cross member which bolts it into the tunnel. That is isolated by the OEM BMW transmission bushings. Steel adapter ring which has been checked for trueness and center and all that which hooks up to a slip yoke style drive shaft and that hooks up to the factory Miata differential. I've got an RX-7 housing on mine that's why it looks different but it is a Miata differential and he uses the K-Miata nose mount. The flange angles have been checked both by myself and a driveline expert and both the diff nose and transmission tail have been shimmed up and down to alter those angles with no results. I've also had multiple drive shafts in the car from several different manufacturers, but blah, blah, blah. If you wanna get into the nitty gritty of everything I've tried, I'll link that video down in the description. The point of this video is to be short and sweet and there's one more test that I wanna try that might just result in me getting water all over the car, but I'm gonna attempt it anyways. I'm going to secure that water bin in the center console and I'm gonna take the car out on the freeway and drive it at various different velocities and see how the vibration looks then and we will call it a wrap from there. So let me get this thing off the jack stands. We'll go and take it out on the road. All right, <laughs> just rolling this thing off the ramps made me realize how much water I'm probably gonna spill. Tofu is definitely getting damaged today. So that's all I got for you guys. I just want to do a short little demonstration video to kind of more accurately portray what's going on here. And I'm gonna keep troubleshooting it and keep you guys updated, of course. Now, that being said, I have been completely ripping the car for the last year and it's not the most pleasant thing to drive, but nothing's broken yet. So in the next video, I'm gonna bring you guys something that a lot of people have been waiting for, answering the question, how fast is the Miata? And not only that, but giving you guys a way to accurately measure the performance of your cars at home, it's gonna be a fun one. I will see you there. Peace out.
Mm-hmm.